Hello, Westover. We're so glad to be with you again today. And today, I have a message of hope for you. God wants us to discover hope in this season, not yesterday, not tomorrow, not the next day, not next week or next month, but today, right at this moment. God has a message of hope for us. We're in our series once again of discovering hope, and God wants us to discover hope in this season. He has something he wants to deposit in our life. But sometimes in order for us to receive the thing that God has for us, we have to change direction. In order for us to receive hope from God, sometimes we need to change our direction. And it got me thinking about a recent trip that my wife and I, we took a couple years ago. We actually went to Europe. And so as we were traveling to Europe, we were flying, we were flying east. And what I noticed about flying east is that you start very late at night and you fly all day and you land at night. And when you fly east, what you discover is that the nights are very long, but the days are very, very short. But then something happened. When we were flying west, back home, back to the United States, what ended up happening is the, the captain came on the intercom and he said something very profound. He said, I need you to shut your blinds because today we're chasing daylight. We're chasing daylight. We're going a different direction. And some of us, we find ourselves in a very dark place. We've listened to culture. We've listened to the media. We've listened to the voices in our mind and in our heart. And we're listening to that. But God's inviting us to change direction, to look for him, to go a different direction. For you see, in order for us to see the sun all day, we must chase the sun up in the sky. But in order for us to have the son of God in our life. We need to chase him every single day. We need to chase him. That's how we'll have the daylight of him in our life when we're willing to chase him every single day. So today I've titled our conversation, Chasing Daylight. And today I wanna share with you three ways to chase daylight in this season, to discover hope, to discover a future, to discover what God has for you in this season. So I wanna invite you to join me in Genesis chapter one. We're gonna go way back to the very beginning. We're gonna look at what God did at the very beginning of the earth and that very first day. What did God do back then? Because there's some insights for us in this season from that passage. So join me there. We're gonna look at the word of God together. Verse one, Genesis chapter one. Let's look at this together. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty and darkness was over the surface of the deep. The spirit of God was hovering over the waters. What I want you to notice about this passage is that even when even when the world was formless and empty and there was no structure and it seemed like nothing was happening, the Holy Spirit was hovering, which is the first way to chase daylight is to let the spirit hover, to let the spirit hover. Some of you, you feel empty. You feel like nothing has come together. You feel like you're hopeless. You feel like you don't have a future. But I wanna reassure you that just like the Holy Spirit was present at the very beginning when nothing came together, he will be there for you. He promises to be there for you. We need to invite him and allow him to hover over our life. And some of you, you feel like this. Maybe some of you, you have a family member or a friend in the hospital with COVID or another illness and you can't visit them. Maybe you're a student and you've missed a promotion ceremony or prom or graduation. Maybe you're a college student and you've missed commencement ceremonies and you're looking into the future and you're looking at a job market that doesn't seem favorable to you. Some of you, you have lost somebody you love and you can't even go to a funeral. I wanna reassure you that even in the darkest moments of life, the Holy Spirit is there to speak and to pronounce hope for you and to hover over the darkness that is in your life. We need to allow him to hover over us. We need to allow him to come close to us. In fact, this word hover, it refers to what a bird does. A bird hovers and goes to her nest and she'll go back and forth to provide food and protection to her babies. In fact, this is what Deuteronomy 32 says. It says that an eagle, a mother eagle, she hovers over her nest to protect and to provide for her young. I want to reassure you that in this season, the Holy Spirit desires to hover over your life. 
I know this personally. I know this intimately. For you see, as I mentioned previously, I was depressed for two years. I felt like I didn't have hope, like I didn't have a future. I didn't see how things were gonna come together. I felt empty, very, very empty. But what I discovered in that season is that whenever I would pray, whenever I would pray in the spirit, the Holy Spirit would come to hover and he would provide peace. He would provide reassurance. He would provide hope to my life. And I wanna encourage you today that if you find yourself in a place where you're depressed, where you're overwhelmed, where you feel like you can't seem to see what's right in front of you, if you can't seem to see what the future holds, I wanna invite you to let the Holy Spirit hover. He wants to provide protection and relief and peace to you. We need to invite him. And so if you're in that place today, I want you to cry from the depths of your heart and say, Holy Spirit, hover. Holy Spirit, hover. Hover over the darkness. Hover over the places where I feel empty. Fill those places. You did it back then, and I need you to do that for me today. In fact, some of you, in order to take that bold step of saying that, I want you to type it in the comments. I want you to say, Holy Spirit, hover. Holy Spirit, hover. God can and will show up if you invite him into the darkness and into the empty places of your life. The second way to chase daylight is to let God speak. Simply let God speak. Verse two through five says this, now the earth was formless and empty and darkness was over the surface of the deep. And God said, let there be light. And guess what? There was light. God saw that the light was good and he separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day and the darkness he called night. And there was evening and there was morning the very first day. Here's my question for you today. Who is speaking into your life and into your heart? Is it the news? Is it a discouraging friend? Is it the voices in your mind that tell you there's no hope? Some of us, we need to leave that behind. We need to change direction. We need to chase daylight. We need to chase the Son of God. We need to say, Jesus, I need you to speak to me in this moment. I want to encourage you that if you're in a dark place, you need to let God's voice be the loudest in your life. Let God's voice be the thing that has the greatest influence into your situation. If you're willing to do that, he'll speak life and light and hope and reassurance to you, even when it's dark and formless and empty. God wants to declare light over you. He wants to turn on the lights in your life. You know, sometimes many of us, we find ourselves waking up in the middle of the night and we decide, hey, you know what? I know how to get around the house. So we stumble around the house. But what we didn't count on was the fact that our child left Legos out or the fact they left a toy out so we trip and we stumble. Maybe the dog decides to sit right where you're walking and you trip over them. We don't have to be like that. We can allow God to turn on the light in our life. He has already said, let there be light. We just need to invite him to let his light shine in our situation. In fact, Jesus had practical advice on this topic. John 11 verses 9 and 10 says this. There are 12 hours of daylight every day. During the day, people can walk safely. They can see because they have the light of this world. But at night, there is danger of stumbling because they have no light. Jesus in this moment was talking practically. He says, some of you, you're able to walk because you have the light of day. But when it gets dark, you don't. So you stumble around. But he's also speaking about our circumstance and in this moment as well. What Jesus is saying is, yes, you had a moment months ago where the light was shining, but now it's dark and now you're stumbling around. Well, guess what? The light of God is always on. It's always available. If you walk with him, the light of his presence will always shine into your circumstance. You don't have to stumble in the dark today. You can invite his light to shine in your life. Some of you, you need to say, God, let your light shine. God, let your light shine in my life. Let him turn on the light in your life. But it doesn't stop there. 
I want, I want to encourage you to let God separate the darkness from the light in your life. Verse four says this, God saw that the light was good and he separated the light from the darkness. What's interesting about this word separated is it just doesn't mean to push apart. It actually means to cut away, to remove and to sever. For some of you, God, he wants to cut away the darkness from your situation. And you know what? God can do it. He can cut away the darkness that is in your situation. All we have to do is say, God, let your light shine. God, let your light shine. And what he will do is he will sever that. He will sever the darkness and put it away from you and let you walk in the light of his presence. I also want to reassure you that there's something interesting about the very first day that we need to pay attention to. It's this, is that it's always dark before dawn. It's always dark before dawn. New days always start in the dark. Look at verse five. God called the light day and the darkness he called night. Now look at this. And there was evening and there was morning the very first day. You know a new day is coming. I don't know when it's happening, but a new day is coming. It's going to start in the dark, but guess what? The light of God is going to come. It's going to shine into our life and into our circumstance, and we can hold fast to it. A new day is coming. God has a new day for you. He's going to shine his light in this moment. And even if you're in the darkness, I want to invite you to ask him to shine into your circumstance because if you do, a new day will start earlier for you. Some of you are in a dark situation, in a dark season for a completely different reason. You're wondering, why am I in the dark? Why do I feel invisible? Why do I feel like no one sees what I'm doing? Let's go back to verse four really quickly. God saw that the light was good and he separated the light from the darkness. What's interesting also about this word separate is it also means to set apart. To set apart for God's purpose and God's use. For you see, God wants to separate you from the world and set you apart for his purpose. And some of you, you feel invisible. You feel like no one sees what you're doing. You feel like no one acknowledges you. You, you, you find yourself chasing approval and affirmation from other people. But what you don't realize is that God has set you apart for a purpose. He has put you apart. He has separated the light from the darkness and he has a purpose for you. In Leviticus 10 verses seven and then into verse nine and 10, this is what it says. Do not leave the entrance of the tent of meeting or you will die because the Lord's anointing oil is on you. For some of you, you wonder, God, why have you set me apart? Why am I different? It's because the anointing of God is upon you. The anointing of God is upon you. He goes on to say, this is a lasting ordinance for the generations to come so that you can distinguish between the holy and the common, between the unclean and the clean. For some of you, God has you hidden in the dark and he's doing you a favor. He's actually helping you. He's helping to prepare you for the thing he has for you. I want you to ask this question. I want you to think about this question. Think very carefully. What if what you're, do, what you're going through today is preparing you for what you prayed for? What if what you're going through today is preparing you for what you prayed for? Many of you, you've been praying for a promotion. You've been praying for more visibility. You've been pr praying for something else. What if this dark moment is to prepare you for the thing you've been praying for? You know, God, he keeps us in obscurity for two reasons. Number one, so that he can speak to you. He wants you to hear his voice. He wants you to follow him all the days of your life. He wants to speak life and light into your life. He wants you to get familiar and intimate with his voice so that when he elevates you, when he puts you on a different platform, you can declare the faithfulness of God. You can put away the chatter of the world and the approval of men, and you can say, God, I will chase you everywhere you want me to go. I will listen to your voice. I will follow your path. I will do what you want me to do. But he teaches you in the secret place in the dark place, in the obscure place, so that when you stand in the spotlight, he can speak through you. God also has you in obscurity so that you can work out some issues in your life. God wants to separate the darkness from the light that, li that lies within you, the presence of God that lies within you. There are some things in your life that are dark 
And he doesn't want to expose those publicly. So he's actually done you a favor. He's kept you obscure. He's kept you in the dark because he wants to sever the darkness. He wants to help you deal with the difficulties and the struggles and the hidden problems that you have in your own heart. He's doing you a favor. So I want to invite you. I want to encourage you. Work those things out. Whatever that means for you, work those things out. Talk to a pastor. Talk to a trusted Christian friend. Talk to a life coach. Talk to a counselor. If you need a counselor, go to my social media page today. I have some resources for you. Don't wait till tomorrow when you're in a different season to deal with the things that God is saying deal with right here and right now. For you see... God saw that the light was good and he wants to elevate you. He wants to put a spotlight upon you, but the light within you needs to be brighter than the light that shines upon you. We need to allow God to shine brighter within us. We need to let him shine through us. That's the life-giving force. That's the life-giving power that we need to give to other people whether it's through music or through our business or through the works of our hands or through our voice, whatever it is, God wants to shine through that. And we must be willing to allow him to do that. For you see, today's struggle becomes tomorrow's success. Today's fire becomes tomorrow's future. Today's difficulty becomes tomorrow's defining moment. So let God speak. Let him speak life and light over you. And the third way to chase daylight is to let Jesus be your light. Let him be your light. Genesis 1.3 says this, and God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and he separated the light from the darkness. Most theologians, all theologians agree that in Genesis 1, the verse 3 The first three verses, we see the expression of the Trinity. We see Father God superintending over all things. We see the Holy Spirit. He's hovering over the deep. We see Jesus, who is the light of the world. We need to let Jesus be the light of our life. We need to allow him to speak life and light over our life. God, he wants to advance us. He wants to move us forward. He wants us to see that he has a plan and purpose for us. What's interesting to me is that in Genesis 1, it starts by saying, in the beginning. But then we look at the fourth gospel, the gospel of John, and it starts off the very same way. So I want to invite you to join me in John chapter 1. Let's look at the word of God together. It says this, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. Listen to this. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. Verse 5. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. It's not overcome him. So today, if you feel broken, Jesus can fix you. Because he was, crea- he was the creator. It was him. He was the one that went forth to create us. And if you're broken today, he can fix you. And if you're in the dark, he promises to be the light that you need to shine into your darkness. Verse 5 tells us, the light shines in the darkness and the darkness has never overcome him. Some of us, we need to hold fast to Jesus. We need him to be the light in our heart. But Jesus didn't just do it from heaven. He actually came to, ver- came to earth. And verse 14 tells us, the word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. God knew that we couldn't reach him. So he came to earth. He took off glory and he came and became a man. And he came and lived among us. And he was born to live, but he was also born to die. He was born to die to save us from sin and from darkness and from struggle and from difficulty. He came to save you. He came to pour out his life for you. Can I just challenge you today to let Jesus be the light in this dark time for you? 
Let him be the light that shines in your situation. So today, if you're depressed, if you're in the dark, let him shine. Let the Holy Spirit hover. Let him speak life and light over you. And if you're in obscurity, just know he wants to put the spotlight on you, but he wants to work some things out in your life. And so today, I just wanna challenge you. If you find yourself in a dark season, maybe without hope, maybe you feel like you're without a future, maybe you feel like things are formless, today there's hope and it's found in Jesus. And so I know some of you who are listening right now, you know you've never made a decision to follow Jesus. Maybe it's been a long time and you once followed Jesus, but you strayed away and now you find yourself in a dark moment. Can I just encourage you to decide today to let Jesus be the light of your life? In him was life and that life was the light of all mankind. Making a decision for Jesus is very simple. It's as simple as ABC. It's saying, A, I acknowledge God that I need you. I'm hopeless without you. I'm in the dark without you. I need you to forgive my sin. B, I believe in you. I believe you came to die for me. I believe you came to save me. I believe you came to give me a future. And C, that you're willing to confess with your mouth from your heart that you need him. And so I'm gonna invite you right now to pray this prayer with me. And it's not about the words, it's about what's in your heart. It's about the heart cry of your heart and saying, God, I need you in this moment. I need you to speak life and light. I need you to hover. I need you to speak. I need you to be the light of my life. Let's pray together. Say this with me. Jesus, I'm in the dark. I feel empty. I feel hopeless. I feel like I don't have a future. And so right now, I invite you into my heart. I believe in you. I believe you came to die to set me free, to forgive my sin. And now I confess that I want you to be the Lord and Savior of my life. So God, do it. Do it today. Do it right now. Shine the light of your presence into my life. In Jesus' name, amen. If you said that prayer with me from your heart, I wanna be the first to say welcome to the family of God. And I just wanna invite you right now to type Jesus in the comments. Type Jesus in the comments. Publicly declare that he is Lord and Savior and the light of your life. And I also wanna ask you to do one more thing. I wanna invite you to text new life to the number on the screen or click on the comments. We wanna hear from you. We wanna encourage you in your walk with Jesus. We wanna speak God's word in his life and his light into your situation today. Let's worship the Lord and let's discover how he wants to provide light to us in this season.